The perfect pizza crust, cheesy, umami packed, like mushroomy topping. Ah, oh, this one guys, such a keeper. This is my four cheese miso mushroom pizza. So I have been working away, like chipping away at my at-home pizza game for quite a while now. So uh, my daughter Charlie and I make pizza every Sunday night. Now I went through quite a lot of research to get to this dough recipe, this technique for cooking the pizza. We're gonna get to all of that a bit later on. But first of all, let's get on to the dough ingredients. So first of all, I'm gonna put some salt into my little tin here. Now you might be wondering what I'm doing with this little bucket and I find at home you know genuinely I really love to make my pizza dough in um, a bread maker because you'll see that um, the texture of the dough is very sticky it makes it harder to kind of mix by hand but I also have instructions on how to do it by hand just check it out on my website so either way I put the salt first so that the salt doesn't come into contact with the yeast too much because yeast and salt they don't like each other to that I'm going to add some pizza flour now pizza flour is high in protein and it gives you that kind of like stretchy firm kind of texture to that I'm going to add some plain flour I like to do a mix not everyone does um, and actually this recipe is based off um, one of my favorite pizzerias in the world which is Roberta's Pizza in Brooklyn in um, in the US so uh, they use a mixture of both of those flours so that's where I kind of started with at home with my pizza journey if you like um, pizza is such a journey isn't it Dax it's a real journey <laughs> It's like in reality shows that they always describe things as a journey and then every time I say it, I'm like, ooh. Um, anyway, <laughs> in my journey, in my pizza experimentation, that's, I don't know, there's no other word for it, whatever, it's a journey. And I'm gonna add in some yeast as well. Now let's go with the wet ingredients. So just some water. And obviously the ratios for this, the measurements will be all on my website in a written recipe that you can go check out. Um, to that, I'm gonna add some olive oil. And then this just literally gets mixed up. If you were doing this by hand, you're probably gonna be mixing for about five or 10 minutes or so. I'm gonna put it on the knead setting here for about 10 minutes. So you can see here, this is quite a wet dough, um, which means it is a little harder to do by hand. You could try out a stand mixer as well to do this in, but um, I really like a really soft, wet dough to start with because I want my pizza at the end to be lovely and crisp and light. And if it's too kind of heavy and dry at the beginning, um, that's when you get a really heavy, doughy kind of pizza at the end. So there's always method to the madness, um, but this is just, you know, the way I've figured out how to do it at home. Um, now this is looking pretty good. So so I'm going to grab this and you can see we've got a lovely kind of sticky dough here ready to go. I'm going to put this aside to prove for 20 minutes. Um, you can just do it with a tea towel over it. I'm going to pop it back in the bread maker. Okay, so now you have a little bit more of a cohesive dough. It's still kind of wet and lumpy. That's okay, <laughs> we're gonna fix that now. Um, this needs to go uh, for another kind of round of kneading now and that's when things will start to look a little bit more pizza dough-y. <laughs> pizza doughy, it's a, it's a term, I'm sure of it. Anyway, pop this back in for kneading and then let's give it 10 minutes. Okay, so now we have a dough that looks very much like a dough you might expect. Um, it's nice and firm. If you push on it there, um, it's sort of springing back a little. So that's really good. Let's get this out. Um, I just need a little bit of flour first of all. And then just encourage the dough to come out. And now just kind of like roll that dough into a little bit of a log. Just makes it easier to, you know, divide it up. Now this amount of dough is going to make six small pizzas. Um, you could just divide it into four if you wanted larger pizzas. You wanna grab a hold of one of your um, bits of dough and then just kind of squish this around. What you're trying to do is like make this taut, um, very tight surface area on the top of the, the ball. And then once you get to this point, just kind of use your the bottom or the palms of your hands to roll the dough together so that on the bottom here, you're kind of getting a flat surface. So you just, the aim is to make one round dough ball without any seams, so that's what we're trying to do here. Now just sort of roll that dough around and then pop it onto a tray with some flour. So 
Now that you've got all of your lovely little dough balls, um, you wanna give them some beauty rest. So grab a tea towel, just slightly damp tea towel, cover them, and they need two hours before they're ready to go. So that gives us lots of time to do our topping, and we're gonna do miso mushroom. Now I have this lovely array of mushrooms here. You can use whatever mushrooms are um, local in your area. I've got some button mushrooms, Swiss browns, some wild oyster mushrooms, which are really lovely. So with these, I just wanna slice some of them and tear some of them depending on their type. These ones I wanna tear. Cook the mushrooms, just need a little bit of olive oil, some butter, and now just throw like your more sturdy mushrooms in first. So I'm gonna go in with my button mushrooms and my Swiss browns. Add a good pinch of salt. And I just wanna let these guys sit and get some really nice color on them because I find if you kind of mess around with the mushrooms too much, they kind of get a bit slimy and soggy. So I just want lovely brown golden mushrooms. These guys are looking pretty good. Just give them a bit of a stir. Now mushrooms are getting a really nice deep golden color on them. And that means they're also developing a lot of really great flavor as well. So when they kind of wilt uh, and get soggy, I find that the flavor is not as intense. So you definitely want this kind of business going on. Wow, that color is really intensified now. That's really great. Now I'm gonna add in some garlic. And I didn't do that to start with because I didn't want the garlic to burn while I was waiting for the mushrooms to color. So for the miso, I need to kind of mix and loosen the miso a little bit before I pop it in with my mushrooms. So just want a little bit, like a couple of teaspoons and some water. And then just mix that so it's nice and liquid. Now my oyster mushrooms can go in. And the miso, I can drizzle that on top. Just toss everything around. Now that is a really great mushroom mix. Lovely dark color. Nothing is looking watery or soggy. That looks really great. Lastly, I'm just gonna add a little sprinkling of parsley. And that is our mushroom mix done. Now about an hour before you want to shape and cook your pizzas, we're going to get down to a really sort of fine art of preparing the oven for the pizza. Now my really good friend um, Vincenzo had this technique on his channel. I actually really love his pizza techniques on his channel and um, I've watched a lot of them. This one is so good because it literally turns your home oven into like a wood fire pizza oven. It's pretty cool, game changing. Okay, so what you need is a pizza stone. I've got one here. You can tell it's well loved. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's not Instagram worthy, but you know, it's my pizza stone from home. So take your pizza stone and then um, with your oven, you want to turn it up as high as it'll go, like 250 if you can Celsius. Pop your pizza stone in and you wanna let that preheat for at least an hour. And then there's more, to, there's more to it later, but we'll get to it later. I'll surprise you with what else you need to do. Or you could just like check out Vincenzo's video. <laughs> now, our little dough balls here should be ready to go. Let's have a look. They look so cute. I just love, <laughs> actually really, I find it very satisfying making dough and watching it sort of come alive. I love it. So these are ready to shape. Now, the point with shaping is that we don't want to interfere too much with the lovely kind of um, proven crust that we've got on the outside of this dough ball. I'll show you what I mean. So lift this up, try and use a pastry scraper so you're not squishing it. Like if you squish that top of that dough, it'll get all wrinkly, it just won't be that great. So pick that up gently, put some flour down, and then use your fingers to just kind of push the dough out from the center. And that way you're forming that crust, that edge around the outside by not pushing on it or wrinkling it or disturbing it too much. Okay, so once you get to this point, now you can start stretching the dough. So you can sort of do it in a circular way first. That's a bit easier. Again, just kind of pushing that crust out and then lifting it up and flipping it. So basically, 
you know, I started out at home when I was making pizza using a rolling pin. I'm like rolling the dough and you just don't get the right texture when really you should be thinking about stretching the dough rather than rolling it. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm flipping it up onto my arm and then flopping it down, stretching the dough while I'm doing that. Okay, so our pizza crust is ready to go. And I'm gonna go with four cheeses today because I freaking love cheese. No other reason than that. <laughs> um, now, uh, what I have here is uh, some provolone. Uh, I've also got uh, this really interesting mozzarella that I found at the uh, deli this morning. It's called Cacciotta mozzarella. And it seems to be like a cured, slightly salty but, uh, mozzarella, but still quite creamy and milky, if you like. Uh, but it's low moisture, so it should be a nice stretchy mozzarella. And then I've got my regular mozzarella here. Definitely always want low moisture mozzarella because otherwise things are gonna get really wet on your pizza dough. And then lastly, I have some really cute little burrata balls as well. So that's gonna be my fresh cheese that I put on at the end after cooking. But let's get into cheesing up our dough. So just want some mozzarella. and some of my special mozzarella, the cacciotta. I have the worst Italian accent. Feel free to come at me in the comments about that. <laughs> uh, and I'm gonna start off by just drizzling my pizza base with some olive oil. And I want my regular mozzarella as a base. Now let's go in with our mushrooms. Now some of my special mozzarella. A little bit more olive oil. Nice fine grating of my provolone. And now this is ready to go in the oven. Now, what you need to do here is that we've had our oven um, heating up and that pizza stone heating up really, really hot. But now what I want is a really fast heat from the top um, to really brown and puff up that crust. So I wanna turn my oven to grill on the highest setting. Now the rest of my oven's still really hot and the pizza stone's really hot, so that's gonna cook the pizza through. That grill is really gonna give us that extra heat to make that crust super brown and lovely. Okay, now pizza stone is the easiest way to deal with your pizza at that point. And then just slide that onto your pizza stone. And this will literally be just a matter of minutes because everything's so hot. Take six, seven minutes, we'll see. Now at this point, you should be saying, wow, look what I made. You should be so excited. I mean, the first time I did this at home, I was like oh, ridiculously excited. So look at that. I mean, you've got that really lovely crust. It's sort of looking a little bit burnished on the edges, that, that lovely kind of char from that intense heat. Oh, so good. Now, we're four cheeses here. So I gotta go in with my burrata. Just going to break off little pieces. parsley, and then some other little extra bits here, just some lemon zest. And here's a little optional extra, Japanese yuzu kosho. It's a citrus and chili paste that's gonna add lots of little pops of yum to the top of my pizza. But you don't have to put it on if you don't want to. And there you go. I mean, I think to be able to make pizza at home just like that is Really cool. I have been working on this like dough recipe and the technique for cooking pizza like this for ages. So I'm really happy that I can share it with you guys. Let's eat some pizza, shall we? Oh, look at that cheese. I mean, oh, so good. And if you have a look in this on the side here, you can see just how much lovely kind of puff that we've got um, on the inside there, just below the crust. So cool, that little bubble. I mean, that's just what you want. Okay, let's eat some pizza. Mm. Ah, that is so good. Ah, like the intense mushroom flavor is so awesome. The, the four cheeses are killing me though. I mean, they're just, ah, it's so good. Mm. Guys, 
I would love you to try this pizza recipe at home. It's just ridiculous. It's yum. Hey guys, if you wanna know whenever I'm releasing something new and delicious, then you should hit that subscribe button and the little bell so that I can let you know every time something new is coming out. Thanks, see you.